How is it that our government could approve a sale of 20% of our uranium at the same time that there was an open FBI investigation? Prep. Devin Nunes Arkalov, interview with Fox News Neil Cavuto, October 26, 2017 Knowing what you know about Russia, was it really a good idea for the Obama administration and the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to approve a deal giving the Russians control of 20% of our uranium supply? Why did Hillary's office and the Obama administration sign off on giving the Russians a fifth of our uranium? Why is that a good idea to give a hostile power 20% of our uranium supplies? It's insane though. How would Hillary Clinton not know if a Russian company was getting 20% of our uranium supply? What was she doing? Tucker Carlson, on Fox's Tucker Carlson Tonight, October 23, more than a year ago, the fact checker labeled as false various claims that Donald Trump, then a presidential candidate, had made about Hillary Clinton's alleged role in the approval of the sale of a Canadian company, Uranium One, with mining rights in the United States to Rosatom, Russia's nuclear energy agency. We've delved deep into the tale and also recently wrote an update since Rep. Devin Nunes, head of the House Intelligence Committee, announced that Congress would launch a new probe. Here, we are going to take a closer look at a key claim that the sale involved 20% of our uranium. Look at how often Tucker Carlson brought up this line in a recent show, saying it was insane for Clinton not to realize that a Russian company was getting 20% of our uranium supply. Sebastian Gorka, a former Trump White House aide, even suggested that Clinton should be tried and potentially executed because the Russians infiltrated our national security to corner the uranium market, and they succeeded. We have noted repeatedly that extracted uranium could not be exported by Russia without a license, which Rosatom does not have, but even so, this 20% figure is especially misleading. At the fact checker, we have described it a bit more precisely as mining licenses for about 20% of U.S. uranium extraction capacity. But we were out of date. It turns out 20% is an especially stale number. The fact the original 20% figure comes from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, one of the agencies that approved the deal in 2010. It stated that as of 2010 the licenses represent approximately 20% of the currently licensed uranium in situ recovery production capacity in the United States. In situ recovery ISR is one of two ways to obtain uranium from underground it's the main method in the United States. It's generally used for low grade ore that would be otherwise too expensive to mine. A solution is pumped into the ore deposit to dissolve the uranium. The resulting liquid is then pumped back out, dried so it becomes yellow cake and placed in 55-gallon drums before it is taken to a uranium conversion facility for eventual use in a nuclear power reactor. But the 20% number was a 2010 estimate that has now been overtaken by events, such as additional mining licenses being issued. The Energy Information Administration has a current list of ISR projects, and the Uranium-1 assets now represent much less than 20% production capacity because other U.S. operations have been approved. The NRC has licensed additional in-situ uranium facilities since the 20% figure was estimated and it was an estimate, an NRC spokesman said in an email. Our current estimate would be closer to 10%. The spokesman added note also that even the original figure does not include conventional mines, and was nowhere near saying they controlled 20% of U.S. uranium reserves. Uranium One has already sold some U.S. assets and may be looking to unload more, an industry official said. That's because the U.S. holdings were incidental to the Rosatom purchase of Uranium One. It was more interested in the company's holdings in Kazakhstan, the world's leading uranium producer. Production capacity is one thing, but the reality is actual production. In fact, so much Kazakh uranium is flooding the market that uranium prices have dropped and production in the United States has plummeted, the industry official said total U.S. production in 2017 is expected to be less than 1,000 tons, and production in 2016 was just 1,126 tons. By contrast, Uranium One's mines in Kazakhstan alone extracted nearly 3,000 tons in 2016.
Uranium One's U.S. business has shrunk so quickly that it now represents a tiny part of U.S. production. In 2016, its Willow Creek facility extracted just 23 tons. That's 2.3% of all U.S. production. In 2015, the project represented 3.6% of U.S. production and in 2014, 11.3%. In 2013, it was still 20%. Two other Uranium One facilities currently are not being mined. This chart shows how Uranium One's U.S. production compares with total U.S. production, and how U.S. production compares with worldwide production, based on information from the World Nuclear Association. Uranium production in the U.S. is so small that I would rarely, if ever, use a statistic like that. It's meaningless, said Jeffrey Lewis, a nuclear expert at the Middlebury Institute of International Students at Monterey. 20% of bucks is still bucks. A spokesman for Nunes did not respond to a request for comment. The Pinocchio test the 20% figure has long been in wide circulation. As we noted, the fact checker recently used it, though with caveats. But we should have looked at the actual production data and asked the NRC for an updated estimate of production capacity. Clearly, the number is way out of date. Given that Uranium One's production is only 2% of an already small total U.S. production, not 20%, the overall claims that Clinton gave away 20% of the U.S. nuclear supplier that Russia controls that much U.S. uranium are simply absurd. Four Pinocchios about our rating scale send us facts to check by filling out this form Keep tabs on Trump's promises with our Trump Promise Tracker Sign up for the Fact Checker Weekly Newsletter to rate this claim as true or false More Pinocchios for false, fewer based on your opinion of the statement's truthfulness. The check mark means you think the statement is true, not that you agree with the rating. We need to verify that you are an actual person. This is a non-scientific user poll. Results are not statistically valid and cannot be assumed to reflect the views of Washington Post users as a group of the general population.